Hello. Hey, how you doing? Good. Um, I'm back from a little bit of time away. Um, uh, and I believe we have a speaker today. And now we'll lead us to her too, so she has the details. Yes. Uh, I've just exited the TOC meeting where we had our ta our monthly tag update and we had a lively discussion around. Oh, hi, Matt. Do you, hey, you, you? you made it to the talk tag? That's good. Oh, uh, well, I, yeah, I just I just left the talk meeting. The, the, um, uh, talk meeting uh, I always said TOC. Do, does everybody else say TOC or do they say talk? Anyway, um, uh, yeah, talk. yeah it was I think I've heard. Talk. Yeah, uh, anyway, uh, we had a good lively meeting. Um, that just ended a few minutes late uh, with 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 the tag chairs, uh, co-chairs around collaboration with other tags, um, AI observability, a whole bunch of other stuff. Okay, okay very giving. good, very good. The, we'll, we'll, the tag will have a detailed update this time um, uh, with slides and whatnot. But uh, we 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 ended up talking uh, around a lot of the, the same issues and some of the things that we raised that we've been experiencing in our tag and strategies to manage it. Um, uh, kind of open the discussion a bunch of other other a few other chairs uh, have, are in similar straits so we've got some meetings to follow along with chris and others as well it was a, it, check out the youtube stream if, if you like as uh we're now at 1204 we're ready to open um so welcome everybody this is the first uh meeting of, of june 2024 for the technical advisory group on durability uh this is a fiancf uh, so please don't do anything uh, on video or in the chat that would be in violation of that code uh, and with that happy tuesday uh, uh Elia, i know you have the details of whatnot uh, i'll let you i think i think uh today we had frederick i'm gonna ping him and see if he can join yeah. because uh he had confirmed to kind of present today on profiling and an update so let me just ping him and uh, see if he can. And then it's nice to see Jonah back here in action. Uh, and also Jay. And, Jonah, and, uh, are, are you walk, while we <laughs> ping him, Jonah, are you, are you walking and diving again? Uh, or I'm always diving, yeah. Updates? Yeah. Yeah, always something. I was in Palau last month for a couple of weeks, but yeah, the usual. Oh, we have a few more that have joined. Um, uh, but we have a speaker lined up. Um, I, I just, for those that are just joining, uh, if anyone's new here for the first time, we have a, a little a lull as we as we as we message our, our speaker. Yeah. Hi, Chilpa. Thank you for joining. Very nice to see you yeah. again. Just... Uh, <laughs> I I was uh, chatting with Chilpa and I uh, you know invited her to also join in into the tag she leads uh, observability for Cap One. Uh, so again, you know, very nice to have her joining in uh, and. Maybe we can all do rounds of intros. Let me just ping Frederick, our speaker, in the meantime. I hope he remembered. Uh, okay. I didn't see it on the agenda. I was looked at the doc right before the call, but maybe it's there now. Hey, Jonah, it was on the issues on the um, CNCF uh, GitHub repos, but oh, okay, yeah, I was just looking at the shared doc. Yeah, yeah, no worries. I mean, again, usually Fred is pretty good, but let me just ping him. Maybe if for... I have not seen him on the channel. But um, in case he has forgotten, which is always possible. Let's have some other areas. We have KubeCon CFPs coming up. So Jonah, are you submitting anything on uh, any of the projects you're working on? I'm going to, I'll probably do the maintainer talk for Jaeger. Okay, very good. Um, I might do a lightning talk on something else too but I'm not sure, but we'll see. Yeah, How about you? we should. Definitely. Um, we are doing an open telemetry update in Seattle later this month. Oh, yeah, I saw um, that. So we'll, uh, we'll all be there. Uh, and the project is also meeting for, you know, uh, kind of uh, maintainer meetings cool. at that time. But um, uh, we definitely are, you know, planning to do a 
couple of sessions on uh, hotel. Let yeah, and I'm see. sure there'll be another observability breakout of some kind, right? Uh, yeah, located yeah. Located something or other. Yes. I think they're trying to do an observability day, but um, yeah. uh, they probably will have it again. I haven't seen the CFPs or the call for actions going, you know, proposals going out. So yeah, let's see. I don't think so. It's already, I think it ends uh, next month. Uh, which one, Vijay? Uh, observability day call for papers. Oh, is it out already? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's on the website. It uh, oh, okay. Thanks for calling that out because um, I know that the um, the uh, CFP for KubeCon is open till June 9th, which is uh, five days from now. I pinged red. Let's see. He could have. He could have forgotten. Saying <laughs> I didn't go and ping him yesterday, but hey. Yeah, that's a great reminder, Alolita. I didn't realize that. Um... CFP um, closes. Yeah, the CFP is open. Yeah. Yes. In fact, uh, Sherpa, you know, again, feel free to encourage your teams also yes. to uh, submit uh, on some of the work. We'll we we yeah. typically do review like abstracts. So if there's anything yeah. that you, you know, want to kind of uh, get reviewed, uh, again, sure. feel free to ping any of us. Sounds great. <clears throat> All right. I pinged Fred. Uh, hopefully. Uh, if you like, I could I could uh, cover one other update. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it, Matt. TLC meeting last hour. Please do. Yes. Um, it was something that I, I had actually suggested because this is, hey, we're looking for tech leads and another, you know, I, I briefly said our, our common drumbeat of, you know, contribution opportunities abound. Um, and Emily had suggested that given the, the 60 percent, if you look at the observability talks from KubeCon and Paris, um, uh, and, and there's about 60% of the folks that attended observability related to talks. It was there for a uh, uh, and they were new to new to observability as well, like you know, new to the ecosystem or new to at least the um, and, and described themselves as newbies. Um, uh, every explanation of uh, a retelling or a narrative uh, really needs to be shaped, I think. Uh, that's not merely technical, like here's the observability blah, signals and, and like, but here are interesting things that you might want to observe. So the operation of LLMs, uh, the, both, both the inner workings of AI, generative AI based applications that leverage AMs and other, other cloud native resources and, and services and, and, and projects, but also running all of that as a workload itself. Like both of those are interesting concerns, and that's where a lot of eyeballs are. Um, similarly, around environmental sustainability, that was another hugely quickly growing um, um, tag and, and interest around you know how, how to tie back not just cost but energy consumption and the full resource chain to make GPUs. Like how do we have what's the framework for that? That's an observability concern. So if we kind of tell the story of what observability is in the papers, talks, or, or messaging. Um, uh, as a narrative that's more like uh, what is being built with cloud native versus just a pure technical first approach that, that is accurate but you know less accessible um uh, i think that it, uh, as the observer uh, uh, the takeaway that someone came to as part of the discussion was perhaps there's sort of a maturity model for tags like we've had three years or so three to four years of rapid expansion as you know, as all these vendors have come to the fray, and you know, the telemetry has dramatically grown. Last year we did profiling. You know, the year before that, there was a huge interest around EBGF and other things that drove that that, that profiling interest, but also just cost for cloud spend has, has increased such that cost monitoring. So the, these drivers kind of main engagement in the tag, uh, demand driven, and it was more air traffic control than what did we structure as work streams that are predictable and cadenced, right? And are less interesting, but more 
um, impactful, perhaps. Um, and so we're, we're at, in this tag, we're, we're at that point now where we need to adopt, and this was my proposal in short, we, we wait for our speaker, um, um, that we, we can really shift this left and move to a self-service engagement model. So, you know, rather than say, ah, we don't have resources to reach out to all of these projects every quarter and have them do updates, you know, from, from the tag outward, you know, let's define um, uh, how how they can self serve. Perhaps every project has an ambassador, or again, you know, that we can give right to a repo, uh, so that they can kind of self serve and they can keep their own in information updated, uh, and and we can use that to uh, a self serve model that's more scalable given our resourcing and this phase of development. And a couple other tags chimed in and said, "Hey, this is working." But, you know, that, that's our experience as well. And so there's a collaboration um, piece that we have between with other tags and for anyone interested, not just for chairs and leads, but contributors around defining like these templates and or mechanisms that, that won't just work for tag observability, but would, would help other tags that are in a similar um, situation in their maturity cycle. So, uh, and, and app runtime was one of them, or I'm sorry, app deploy. Uh, the, the, App deploy was one of the examples that um, um, chimed in. So it was a cool discussion. It should be on YouTube later today. So I pinged Fred and I don't, I did not hear back from him. So I'm assuming he forgot. Um, but we, I'm sure he'll surface, you know, in a different meeting. <laughs> Because uh, we had chatted on, you know, GitHub, and then he said that he, you know, he'll share info on Slack, and um, I think he probably got busy because he was trying to figure out, you know, when he'll be available. All right. That said, um, Matt, did you also want to give an update on what's happening in the AI uh, work group? Because I think that there was an interest in also uh, kind of giving a AI enabled, you know, um, observability uh, deep dive in that uh, in that work group, and uh, you know we had a very interesting and pretty packed session where Vijay and I presented with uh, Bartek uh, and in Paris on um, the tag, you know, and the updates from us, but also there was a fair bit of interest from. Uh, you know, the larger community in terms of how um, AI is being used, Gen AI especially models, you know, are being used for uh, solving observability data, uh, um, you know, correlation and analysis at scale. Um, and have you heard anything back from the AI uh, work group as they work through the, some of those details? Who is the question directed at? Uh, yeah, uh, to me, oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> sorry. Sure. So, I well, so in the talk meeting, luckily, <laughs> I, I said I, I was talking with my mic off. It's actually timely and uh, happily ironic, I suppose. But the the two, you know, as you know, the the, the tag runtime and tag observability were, were sort of in the Q and next to talk about. So a lot of a lot of it was on the the former, and some of the discussion was mm -hmm. around the AI working group um, in, in both runtime and, and specifically in the AI yeah. space. Um, Ricardo was saying that they kind of have the exact opposite problem or, or, or happy challenge where they have so many people that want to have a hand in white papers and this and that, and they're all very driven about what they want to do, right? They're, they're, they're just so new that anyone building anything with AI is basically learning and doing at the same time. Right, so you have all of these cook, all want to cook a different recipe, um, but but the paper, you know, is served all along later, right? So so they're 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 working on how can we peel off, you know, and how do we how do we keep these new contributors engaged, but and give them space to go create things, but we do have to have that convergence happen, um, you know, the other part of innovation and invention and brainstorming, but coming back together part, um, and so. Um, they they have kind of the opposite experience of, of uh, they're, they're, you know, um, and so in that, I think there's a lot of different opportunities. Uh, it was called out by others. That, uh, obviously, observability is such a cross-cutting concern that if we kind of 
you know, I'm not saying we need a marketing team, perhaps, but it would be cool if we had one, you know, because really observability is, I, 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 I when they were talking about how do you ha handle this, when you want to say all of these people want to tell the story of what they built. Many of them are building things with instead of Legos, right? So, 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 how do we, you know, if if we kind of reach out to other tags and work with them and engage with them in, in, in for example, the AI working group, um, with a set of, you know, uh, storytelling tools, you know, like and I and I use the exact not only storytelling but also, you know, the scientific method. I said one of our one of our early speakers on the expert series, uh, expert speaker series was. From uh, uh, the Quine the Quine project and give it talk about observ observability and the scientific method and how when we're observing things and then inferring what's going on based on those observations, observations you know, and, and testing our, our various hypotheses as to diagnosing a problem, you know, which one's right that strike that reverse it, you know, that's the scientific method. So, like, so if we have like, hey, we're scientists and we and we're all making these things and we need they're very expensive in some cases uh, and we want to observe them. Here's how we tell that story. Then those people that are very passionate, you know, will both I think have some crossover, but it could it could provide like a common set of tools that they can. What am I going to say? They're like non-functional benefits here, right? To helping people organize by by giving them the same kind of a framework to tell stories around, right? So let's do a bunch of lightning talks. Is a lot easier to process because you have some expectation that they're all about the same length, they're all about the same format. Versus, let's have twenty people talk about their stuff, hash it out in an hour. Right? No one wants that. Right? So, so I think from tag observability, we, if anyone were, wants to work on it, we can kind of shape this narrative about what is cloud native observability and why do you care? Because it helps you tell the story about your organization of the things you've built. Right. And 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 that that starts a lot of really cool conversations that bring in not the nerdiest of the nerds, but the broader part of the pyramid that we need to be attracting. So I think there's a win-win there. Um, it's a bit, a bit of an amorphous answer, but but basically, <laughs> yeah, uh, all, all of the interest really seems to be, or a lot of it is in the in, in, in the AI space, with the notable exception of, of environmental sustainability tag, where some of these ideas came out of, they have actually been using them to some success and self-organizing quite quickly, um, uh, as evidenced by all the AI from Paris. Mm, okay, that's, that's, that's super interesting. I think... I think there are a lot of intersecting points at this mm -hmm. time because uh, there's a fair bit of work that's ongoing, but I think it's also important to kind of pull some of the projects, you know, into the uh, into having a more well-defined um, focus, if you will, on you know how some of these components are getting incorporated into the uh, you know into the project tool chains, for example, you know, with all the LLM uh, semantic conventions work that's ongoing on open telemetry, um, there is at least a glimpse of initial, you know, bindings where uh, definitions for, you know, what those metrics look like from LLMs and uh, what, how you define some of these behaviors uh, and how you measure them is, you know, kind of starting to happen. But I think there still is, you know, a fair bit of work to be done there. And with the QLS, you know, work group that we have been having also, there was another opportunity um, to kind of see if we could uh, provide an, you know, reference implementation with one of the um, open LLMs to be able to, you know, kind of provide in um, uh, the ability to ha have a natural language interface on top of the query languages that exist for all the different tool chain tools today, right? So, so there are uh, several, you know, really cool projects. I think that we could actually at least have reference implementations for, um, you know, wherever they're seated, and and um, at least you know, kind of put into put in a more formal approach, uh, if you will. To, because this, the, you know, this change is here to stay. Uh, we will never have applications, you know, being built again, right. which don't have some dependency so. on some, uh, you know, uh, combination of of uh, models as well as software. And and it really is that, you know, that needs to kind of be baked in into our approach of how we do observability, you know, and at what layer, um, 
you know, of granularity because the cardinality aspects are even higher, right? I mean, if you look at it as in terms of the, uh, whether that's QPS or whether that is, you know, uh, ingestion uh, yeah. um, and collection. So it really is that I, I see very little work being done in a formal way at the CNCF in the in our area, you know, of specialization. And um, I'm yeah. very curious, you know, because all of us are kind of dabbling in things. But uh, um, Jonah, I'd be very curious as to, you know, kind of... Well, I, I just wanted to seeing. mention... Yeah, I just wanted to mention, because you talked about natural language query type stuff uh, yeah. in open search, we already added that. Um, and you can actually run the model uh, locally, as well as interfacing with an API. So in the UI, you can do natural language query, which is kind of Yeah, cool. I mean, the thing that I think, um, and I've, you know, again, I've looked at that. Um, yeah. I, I do think that, you know, again, it's a good uh, attempt, you know, yeah, initial yeah. attempt. And it's not I think great, that but it's a, it's a good start, right? But it yeah. isn't working implementation. And I yeah, think yeah. that going from there, um, a lot more can be done, at least, you know, even if we yep. pick that up and uh, kind of extended that, because at least it solves the object, you know, kind of one of the purposes was to, hey, you know, you don't need to understand elastic query language right. under the hood. Exactly. Right? So, and well, it's like... technically Lucene query language. <laughs> yes, exactly. I agree. <laughs> totally agree. Um, I don't want to give and, elastic and Lucene, credit for uh, Apache. So, uh, <laughs> very good point. <laughs> I mean, Lucene query language, in fact, is even more, uh, you know, abstract if you will yeah but uh, there's a whole uh there's a whole um query processor where you can do uh sql or other languages and you can actually pipe them together it's part of mm -hmm. open search so mm -hmm. you don't even have to use uh lucene if you don't want to but anyone that's used elastic search or open search it has to yeah no they, they're familiar i'm saying they right, can right. use it if they want but true true yeah, I think I think yeah, I, I, I have an idea. I think that a cool um, another example of how we provide sort of a batteries included open source um, observability showcase, you know, for for AI and the natural language stuff is a little different, um, and it's how can we serve up, you know, a signal data uh, as as sort of rag. So how do we do? How can we augment? How can we use retrieval augmented generation, but with a graph underlying the data mm -hmm. source of all of this observability data? Um, because you know, uh, and this this I think has been there's a bunch of talks about this recently yeah. as well. Um, you know, with semantic search and, and and being able to to do a lot of the stuff that now is a lot you don't need necessarily as many as much manual cycles to do classification. Uh, and to do other things on on input stuff, but but to make to to serve up observability data and 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 and, and with some post processing and blending of signals um, as a as a data source in, in a rag context for for, for making LOLs, uh, be able to have that as part of the, the questions and answers that go in and out of the model uh, in a way that's secure, right? Because so, so the local case around my, my own my own local my own local data rather is not just documents and this is just like prospectus and and spreadsheets but i think th there's an opportunity to, to to tell a story about how how yeah. all the things we observe are, are part of that that data mm -hmm. set as well mm -hmm. um, so i did I, uh, I, chat with fred on the site just to let everyone know and he has confirmed for the next tag meeting um cool. june 18th so sorry about you know again the confusion here i think he just got stuck in a incident of some p0 he's trying to uh fend <laughs> <send> it <laughs> so <laughs> happens to all of us um but i think um again let's kind of you know maybe take this as a discussion because i do think that you know one of the things that should be very useful and again shopa you know please feel free to chime in from an um, you know, from a use case perspective, is that um, maybe like having a initial kind of um, high level um, paper of some sort, you know, in it could be even on our 
um, GitHub site, but you know, kind of working through some of the details of you know what does what does observability uh, leveraging LLMs and for LLMs look like, right? And and again, I think that uh, it's it's the both areas are you know equally interesting because at least observability for foundation models, you know, uh, is a is still work in progress. There's a lot, you know, of proposals, yeah. but it's also not a solved problem. I, I guess, yeah, I, I, I should clarify something I said earlier too, of, um, the inner workings of LLMs being, uh, the inner workings of, of Gen AI based or Gen AI, the modern apps that we see or mm -hmm. postmodern apps. Um, um, it, it's, not, it's not necessarily about that, but they're well, it's really about agentic systems you know, it's more of a 90s idea from when I remember it last um, and from sci-fi, but, you know, I think the multi-agent systems and their interactions, like that's a story, that's a narrative or a concept that is very familiar from, you know, microservices or distributed apps or multi-tier apps, even before that, where you're always looking at messages going back and forth between different actors. But that's the composition, I think, of, of the apps we're going to see as a whole bunch of, you know, NVIDIA's new platform that they released has, you know, as you would expect, Lambda running on Kubernetes effectively, functionally, that are little instances of a bot that just gives one response. Um, everything from, from from that at the at the at the smallest little granules of, of, of the smallest atoms, all the way up to much more complex systems with with teams of, of very specially skilled individual agents doing different aspects in a coordinated way as like a, mm -hmm. a real team would. So the observation of that, I think, you know, we've got the rudiments for it already, uh, but, it, you know, I think what we have today as state of the art will not be sufficient because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the mental models that we're asking people to build now, that they then build from like graph current tables and such um, uh, are no longer sufficient for, for, to, to tell the story. So I think we need to externalize that model. Right, and there's a big opportunity for both UX and UH human computer interaction. You know, how do we how do we do this, as well as other forms of, of, of you know, AR, VR, input, output, other forms of controllers. Like, I think I think everything is um, up for grabs. It feels like a greenfield to me, and in terms of like how do we tell these story and, and what, what tools, both embedded electronics that are local, you know, like a big TV or a smart display, it's it's a more interesting stuff. Uh, yeah, I watched uh, Alalita's video um, on intelligent observability. Uh, I was pretty fascinated by it. Um, uh, to be honest, like we are very early um, in even like thinking about like observing our LLMs. Um, I think it's going to happen very, very soon. Like our pillar is named like intelligent observability. Um, actually, observability, intelligence, intelligent insights. Um, so that resonated very well with your um, presentation. Alalita, that was very well um, described. It looks like you all are like far ahead in the game. Like you're already trying to solve <laughs> these problems. Which are well, really yes. I mean, uh, I think some um, folks definitely are, Sherpa, because we have to. <laughs> sure. Uh, and also like- um, just too many zeros. <laughs> I think building models to um, get more automated insights. Yes. Is even more fascinating, right? Like, yeah. Yes. Yes, I wonder like where we all stand in that space. Like, are you all like already um, strategizing? I, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the thing that I think Sherpa, we are uh, looking at that, you know, there is a um, pent up demand, if you will, which is building with where, you know, there needs to be more discussion and community discussion, if you will, and, and really open source work uh where you know this is uh, kind of documented and shared and formalized right because again these discussions obviously are happening uh in, down to the implementation down to looking at okay what are the use cases you know and 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 as matt said you know challenging the current paradigms of the way that you know observability is done today right because at the end of the day it's uh, it's an it's really a sequential process today where you have, you know, different layers of observability being built out and instrumented for 
traditional software, <laughs> you know, we call it traditional at this point, because, you know, again, if you were to apply um, uh, models along with it, and, and this has happened already in, as Jonah was saying, you know, like in natural language processing, um, some of this has already taken place, right? But I think that transition continues to become more ma mainstream. And as you build applications, you know, again, how do you understand and observe different types of assets that compose intelligence, right? And again, whether that is the software components, whether that's configuration, whether that's, you know, infrastructure, or whether that is, you know, models and assets, right? So um, again, I think that that still is a very, very, you know, kind of niche area. But, and, and there are no formal conventions around it. So some of the initial work that's starting to happen uh, will address some of the use cases, as you saw even in a previous generation of observability with tracing, you know, coming into being tracing, I think it was very unique when it, you know, was uh, pulled out of the OS layer and really applied generally to applications because, you know, tracing has existed in, the kernel and, and the operating system for a very long time. But being applied in general purpose to applications has, you know, has kind of grown really in the last few years. Well, there was um, on mainframes, there were containers and you could actually trace between yeah, absolutely individual subsystems on mainframes back in like the 1980s. So <laughs> they were doing this stuff. I long before we had like Java or any kind of distributed real software out there. Good point. But, yeah. and I think uh, that, I yeah, go ahead, Matt. Dr. Yala, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I misread no, no, no. uh, the number. <laughs> all, Please continue. No, all I was saying is that I think that, yes, you're right, uh, Jonah. And, but I think what also happened is that until there were, you know, standardized, uh, um, efforts to actually pull in distributed tracing as a standard yeah. you know all the proprietary implementations there before then were really computer science you know implementations but not necessarily used at the distributed scale that the internet you know and applications thereof operate at sure. so so in the modern generation at least in this generation where we are looking at distributed computing as well as, you know, cloud, um, uh, you know, cloud scale uh, implementations, um, tracing, you know, landed in because of the standardization that uh, has, you know, occurred over, over the last decade. Oh. Yeah. Go ahead, Matt. Um, so I, I've been, I've had a little downtime. Um, I, I'm no longer with Apple. Um, and uh, rather than just rush headlong, in, you, you know, in, into what comes next, I've actually been taking some time to do something around this very topic, um, around what, what are the, if there were like a increasingly level of concentric, increasing concentric, concentric circles in terms of, 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 of integration and, and, and adopting the, some of the benefits of, of LLMs, for observability problems, we've talked through a few of them. I've been kind of toying around and, and, and playing on the side uh, at home on, on my Threadripper collection, <laughs> um, uh, a slightly different application of them. And, and that's, you know, and, and to recap, we've talked about using uh, natural language queries to generate PromQL or generate other languages, right? which means that you're asking an LLM to do this language translation, which is a reasonable, cool thing to do. Another thing that we touched on briefly was retrieval augmented generation, and in particular, um, in non-observability uh, 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 lines of, of, of active work in the last few months, in open source in particular, um, is all manner of, of, of systems that are doing retrieval augmented generation initially with more traditional either relational source or, or, or tabular kind of data or test or corpus of text. Uh, test tech work by, um, you know, as the sources of RAG and and then launching, you know, vector databases of very uh, <laughs> strands and effectiveness. Uh, but but that that whole RAG thing now is 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 being evolving to more. If we structure our data as a graph, now we have semantic search, semantic meaning that we can infer and have a graph RAG, if you will. I've actually been thinking about 
LLMs in general and their properties of not really caring that it's English versus another spoken language or even another machine language. Well, if you think about it, like what does an application that's emitting signals seem like to me? Well, it's a thing squawking a language. And now we have four signal types or five, depending on how you count. But I was also thinking about our very first speaker series uh, uh, talk from Liz uh, Fong Jones on hybridized signal types and blending of signals. And so if we just say the union set of the observed signals that are that are, rec are recorded from an application form a, a language, right? Um, uh, every service, every every emitter of, of signals is is saying exactly what's going on. So what if we had LLMs fronting that? So not just to write queries, but actually to hear what's happening and 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 understand that as a language. Like so, that would mean training specialized models. But the cool thing is, we could be doing this at the edge or at the point of collection. We could be doing the listening and the model execution, and and depending on the scenarios from ARM based edge hardware the handhelds to maybe large Kubernetes cluster that now can use some of the dynamic resource allocation and dynamic resource, what is it? That, I forget the particular term, but a lot of the pox are on Paris where uh, augmenting um, uh, Kubernetes um, uh, constraints and and and, and limits to, to not just be uh, millicores and, and, and memory, but also be an arbitrary set of other things that are more relevant for GPU uh, um, scheduling and orchestration, right? So, so so we could be running on Google or yeah. Kubernetes clusters, you know, as part of, as an OL um, uh, transformer or uh, problem, mm -hmm. rather, uh, for example, is one implementation. And one could imagine uh, there's some hardware and some not around inferencing to, to kind of to kind of treat these applications as things that are speaking a language to us mm -hmm. and letting the LLMs process that. Now, whether that can be done efficiently or how that would need to be done, you know, is an engineering problem. But just mm -hmm. from a design perspective or an architecture perspective, I, I kind of see that as like another another echelon or another type rather, not echelon because it's not cumulative necessarily, another way that, that, that LLMs can be integrated by just by just t training models that speak the language of observability signals. Um, and then having teams of those things working together and talking about what's going on. So you could almost imagine like if every stream of signals had its own little micro inferencing engine, my, my, its own little micro agent, you know, those agents can talk to each other. There, there's now projects like Crew AI out of Microsoft, there's Taskweaver and Autogen, and there's a whole bunch more coming up. Uh, uh, another interesting one is uh, um, uh, called uh, Fabric. Um, and it's more around collecting prompts and, and matching the right prompt strategies. To, but in any event, there's all these kind of tools coming up that, that are going to allow us to, to build Wait, these What sorts of uh, project is Fabric, Matt? Uh, let I mean, me uh, it's there, a Microsoft. Sorry, Jonah. What, what no, it's a my, it's an Azure service. Oh, I see. I see. Oh, is, okay. oh, is it a service? Okay, yeah, it's our. It's. I, I wanted to copy up because I just heard about it yesterday. That's why. But the other. Oh, no, no, I I've, I've uh, used it. Auto, yeah. yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. But my my point is like um like that kind of model. You can almost see like the things monitoring different workloads could have yeah. their own agents and they could collaborate locally on what they're observing, right? So we can kind of kind of allow, allow that kind of collaboration. And so again, like the observation of how these agents, I think are multi-agent systems yeah. might, 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 might be done. Have again, you, it's like, yeah. Have, that you all, have, have any of you looked at Arise? They're a startup that does. No. A customer of. Uh, yeah, I have. Uh, and Ivan was using them. So they were, I have. Yeah, um, I have, uh, I've looked at some of their. Yeah, it's. Um, I'll put the URL in. Yeah, yeah, please do. Um, but Arise yeah. has actually kind of started to you know kind of build build out some of yeah. this, and uh, it it is definitely interesting. I mean, interesting work that they're yeah. doing. Are they? I think they are also joining in in the hotel. Oh, I don't uh, know. I'm not a LLM semantic yeah, conventions work group. Probably, um, probably, I would guess. Yeah. They're kind I, of the I, only ones doing this stuff from what I've yes. seen. And there's a, a pretty big customer at Ivan that's using them and they had good things to say about them to monitor. Cool, cool. Very interesting. Models because stuff. a lot of the other folks are actually doing more, um, you know, compliance than they are doing yeah. observability, if you will. Sure. And um, I think that the current uh, participants, even in the LLM, uh, you know, semantic conventions discussion on hotel are uh, 
a lot of Azure partners who are really kind of working with OpenAI uh, frameworks and hence, you know, they are kind of trying to figure out if there's some way of, you know, defining a convention which they can then use across their own services. Um, but it's still, you know, a lot of work there to be done because Google, I think, has participated some, but not, you know, not a lot. Um, and uh, definitely other folks could do with participating more, right? So again, it would be interesting to invite these folks. If you know them, Jonah, do invite them. Because, yeah, um, I know the CEO. Um, I probably I need to find probably someone else. I'll drop uh, Jason a message. Okay, okay. I mean, uh, you know, invite. Oh, you mean the in. customer, or do you mean a rise or anyone? Uh, uh, either of the two. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we were working with someone pretty senior. <laughs> they is, they are. Is it an open source project or just a? Or I think they, it's a. a it's a, just a, a startup. Yeah, it rise is a vendor. It's a vendor. Oh, so, okay. but. Um, so you know, these, they could they could perhaps just you know come and they could tell an end user story or or, or something. Yeah, um, I yeah. was asking too. The end user working group, I guess, is picking up steam from 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 what I heard last hour, um, and that could be a place for them too. They're, they're doing um, surveys and end user case studies and things like that. So, if they're a CNCF member um, and an end user on their um, they could they could we we could point them that way as well. Yeah, I'll drop. I'm gonna drop them a note. I'm gonna to have to drop in a moment, a few minutes. Yeah, early. even I have to, but we're at time, so you know. Again, I did take some notes in our and Shilpa, The way that you know we run these meetings is that uh, we typically have different topics. Again, I you know we invite everyone to come and present. Uh, they can be short topics or you know detailed topics, but we typically have about 45 minutes in this session. And meet twice a twice a month, uh, and we have working groups, right? Which we kind of focus in and deep dive on. Uh, if there are areas that we can, you know, kind of we actively work with different projects as well as with the TOC. So um, again, if there are specific topics that you know you're interested in, we can always invite and reach out to experts uh, in that area and kind of you know have uh, uh, very useful discussions. Uh, and Matt, just for your reference again, Chopra's, you know, uh, you know, given she is also knee deep in observability, again, I invited her to come and join in. <laughs> and and uh, uh, again, we have a pretty nice community in this, you know, discussion group. And uh, we do tend to kind of deep dive and uh, work on specific areas and then come back and kind of present that back to the tag. Yeah, I, I would love to be more involved. No, no, totally, totally appreciate it. Ah, yes, thank you, Alalita, for inviting yeah, totally. me. <laughs> All right, I think we're at time. So, Jonah, very nice to see you again. Thanks you know, try you. to pull in some of the open search folks to come and present if you can. They will, uh, yeah. You just and whatever um, you want. Do you want them to talk about something in particular? Just yeah, so. let's let's chat about it because there yeah, are some yeah, areas yeah. that they could actually deep yeah. dive into. Like, for example. They could even talk about the open search operators, which would actually be very interesting in terms of deployments and scale. I think yeah. that they've been rolling some of those out. They're not, they uh, still need some work. So that's a good point for discussion. Uh, but yeah. again, you know, there's some work sure. there that could be done. Uh, that's one area. The second area, as you said, you know, is the NLP, um, yeah. you know, uh, interface that they've been building. They should mm -hmm. come and showcase that. Yeah, yeah. Um, the third area again is that I'd love to see more interoperability with OTLP, uh, you know, for export. Uh, yeah. They've built some, you know, some kind of a, um, they've written exporter to uh, open search, but not a receiver, right? So um, again, would love to see bi-directional, you know, choice for customers. And um there, there are several topics that you know actually could be very interesting to cover. Okay. Yeah. And should. and you should definitely do an update on tracing. Actually, one of these days with Jaeger. Yeah, sure, we can do that. We have a big project, Jaeger V two. That yeah, yeah. We debate at the mm -hmm. end of the summer. So yeah, which would be really super yeah, to actually cover because I think that yeah. you know, um, as Jaeger you know converges some of its uh, yeah. infrastructure with Otel. 
uh, that's one layer but then there's all, lots of other work to be done also yeah. uh, and you know we ready up to see a lot more um compatibility if you will sure. for with the different uh, ui frameworks if you will right so yeah we're, um, we're almost at time so we could follow up on slack but um yeah, I'm saying, yeah. Uh, both, both both the silpa and for the recording for anyone who may watch um uh in the toc uh the toc tag interaction model has been has been changing uh to to use and leverage some online tools like github a little bit better than we have in the past um to, uh, something that alalita and i um, um uh, have been kind of like driving a discussion around or participating in a discussion around um for, for several years now um uh, and so that i think that's having some good results. So there are uh, a number of less glamorous sort of, I don't want to call them administrative yet because they're important and they're not trivial, um, but uh, there is a new landscape um, look and feel with the, the V2, which is not, not to be confused with the landscape graph, which is separate. Um, and there's a bunch of activities that are happening that, that are observability related and ecosystem um, understanding re related as well as TOC um, uh, work streams. An example uh, that came up, Chris talked about it, and we're going to have a follow-up uh, this week sometime. Uh, what was the glossary project, the cartographos working group, and, and the, out of the business, uh, the, that whole thing. We have an issue around putting observability terms into that glossary, which exists for non-technical uh, uh, corporate decision makers and other executives to understand, and leaders to understand um, terms, cloud-native terms, right? Well, they mm -hmm. You know, out of conversations that we had over years past, there's an ontology um, uh, a project that, that we want to start up around turning that glossary, which is just a list of terms and definitions, into something more well formed and on an, an actual ontology um, that fits into some other work we've done. So that's one example. There's also um, what I mentioned before, defining how do we reach out to projects in such a way that shifts it left and gives them agency and ownership to tell their own stories, but yet have us be able to curate and collect it and tell the story at domain level, as well as, you know, support these projects better. Yeah, uh, I, I agree. Uh, I agree. And so, I think both uh, of these but, projects there's a lot of issues as well. Agreed. Um, agreed. Uh, I mean, respect. both of these projects, I think, are very, very valuable, actually, to the end users. So I, I do think that we should restart those issues because we had noted them in the issues on the GitHub. Oh, website, yeah, sure. But um, we can definitely follow up on it. All right, we're at time. So uh, thank you everyone for joining in. And I did take some notes again. If you have any other points, call them out. <laughs> take care. Thanks. Bye. We'll regroup Bye. with Fred on, on nice. the 18th. Thanks. Thanks, Shilpa. Bye. Bye. Yeah.